it was very early in the morning, as the first streaks of light were beginning to be seen in the sky. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, made their way to the tomb. They had purchased aromatic embalming spices so that they might anoint Jesus' body. And they'd been asking one another, who can roll away the heavy stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But when they arrived, they discovered that the very large stone that had sealed the tomb was already rolled away. And as they stepped into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right, dressed in a long white robe. The women were startled and amazed, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I know that you're here looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen victoriously. Look, see the place where they laid him. Run and tell his disciples, even Peter, that he is risen. He has gone ahead of you into Galilee, and you will see him there just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid.
Good morning and Happy Easter. Today we're celebrating the fantastic news that when Jesus rose from the dead on that first Easter Sunday morning, he wasn't just experiencing new life on his own behalf, he was opening it up to all of us. In a letter to the church in Rome, the Apostle Paul put it like this, Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. It doesn't always feel like that, does it? Just listen to Luke's account of what happened to two of Jesus' disciples on that first Easter Sunday. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. When some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, You're very slow to catch on, aren't you? And to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Don't you see? that the Messiah had to suffer all these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, didn't our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. It's Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. But maybe you're finding that truth hard to access right now. Maybe your experience is more like that of those disciples, still on the journey, trying to make sense of what is happening in your life and finding it hard to hope for anything right now. If that is you, know that God loves you, understands you, and is ready to walk that journey with you and bring you to the point of recognising who he truly is. Let's picture those two disciples walking together along the road to Emmaus. They're discussing all that's happened in the last few days. They just can't make any sense of it. They must have been experiencing a number of different emotions, maybe shock, numbness, feeling lost and let down, confused, grieving that they'd lost their friend and their leader. The hope that he was the one to come and deliver Israel had been cruelly dashed. 
When the stranger joins them, he sees their sad faces and asks what they're talking about. They react with amazement that he doesn't already know about the things that have happened. He invites them to tell their story, along with the feelings that go with it. And only then, only when he has really listened to them, does he start to help them put the pieces together. He takes them through all the scriptures that make reference to himself. Maybe you are experiencing a sense of confusion and wondering where God is in a crisis that you're facing. Maybe you're asking why God would allow something like this to happen to you. When we are in the midst of grief and pain, there are questions we can't answer, things we don't understand. Just like these disciples, we don't always recognise Jesus or sense his presence with us. Grief both numbs and overwhelms us. When the disciples reach Emmaus, they invite Jesus to stay and eat with them. And as he breaks the bread and gives thanks, their eyes are opened and they realise that it's him. At that very moment, he disappears from view. As they talk together afterwards about what's just happened, they realise that Jesus was present all through their journey. He was there in the questions. He was present in their confusion and in their grief. And as they recall the way they felt, didn't our hearts just burn within us? Their sorrow is turned to joy. Jesus opens up their minds to understand and their hearts to see him as the risen Christ. Death was not the end of the story and it's not the end of our story because Jesus is alive. This is good news. There is new life for us here and now. Jesus comes to us whether we're experiencing faith in fullness or doubts, whether we're experiencing joy or in the midst of sorrow. He's always on the journey with us. His promises never fail and he has promised never to leave us. I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. I sing a simple song of love To my Saviour To my Jesus I'm grateful for the things you've done My loving Saviour Oh precious Jesus is glad that you've called me your own. There's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love. In your arms of love. Holding me still Holding me near in your arms of love. I sing a simple song of love to my Savior. Yeah.
will You're holding me near You're holding me still You're holding me near In your arms of love Seeing who Jesus really is isn't necessarily as complicated as we sometimes make it. And maybe you remember that moment when Jesus told his disciples to rejoice because their names were written in heaven. And then he said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned and you've revealed them to little children. On another occasion, when the disciples were getting anxious about their heavenly status, he said to them, unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Children give us a unique perspective on faith. Provided they haven't had bad experiences in this area, trust comes naturally to them and they express that trust in word and deed. Perhaps we could all take a life lesson from children and remember that trusting in God as a loving father is a natural thing for us to do, and not as difficult as we sometimes make it. So as we celebrate Easter with one final song, let's remember that he is the faithful one who walks alongside us in everything we do. He is our rock in times of trouble.
We celebrate Easter because the cross is the hinge point of history. At Christmas, we celebrate God in human form, coming as a vulnerable baby to share our human state. But at Easter, we celebrate the amazing fact that God chose to die for us, to pay for all our mistakes and failures. And today, Easter Day, we celebrate the resurrection, when he rose from the dead and opened the way to the Father so that we could be called children of God and have an eternal relationship with him that starts now. All we have to do is accept him into our lives. If you'd like to do that, you might want to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I am sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life and for living without reference to you. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time and you'd like us to pray for you, then please do let us know by emailing prayer at meltonvineyard.org.uk. Thank you for sharing Easter with us. We'd love to welcome you to one of our on-site services at John Fernley College, which start at 10.30am every Sunday morning. You can find more information about those and about the church on our website, meltonvineyard.org.uk. Once again, Happy Easter, and God bless you.